Zelda Breath of the Wild walkthrough part 13. So this is us finally getting to Kakariko Village after talking to the Korok Seed Master in the previous video. So most of this video is going to be a whack load of cutscenes, so I'm not going to be narrating for too much, but I'm going to explain that anytime you do find a new town, like I said with the horse stables, it's a pretty good idea to go around, check out the shops, see what's in there, talk to everybody, get as many quests as you can. Now I'm probably not going to be doing that in this walkthrough just because I want to try to make it as basic as possible to get to the end of the game, uh, but it is going to be a huge help and a huge benefit for you if you do as many side quests and mostly as many shrines as you can before you try to beat it. There's also another shrine here which we won't be doing in this video but I will be going to it and unlocking the quick travel point and I only did that just in case there's some weird event where you know I needed to come back here say the game crashed or something I don't know I mean the game saves a lot but uh, if anything if games have taught me anything it's better to be safe than sorry. You can also talk to this person right at the beginning, she's going to tell you you're going to want to go to Impa's house, which she will then tell you the direction to go to Impa's house, and it's the big fancy magnificent house over to the left, which we'll see here in a second. So there's not really too many massive towns in this game, the biggest city, which is Hyrule, is kind of in ruins, and it kind of, I don't know, it was kind of sad there wasn't some really fancy castle place like there was in previous Zelda games like Ocarina of Time, obviously, and even <clears throat> even Twilight Princess, but anyway, it's kind of fine. Uh, most of the, the the most purpose of these towns is there's pretty good armors that you can buy here. There's always shops you can buy here. There's usually supplies that you may have a difficult time finding somewhere else, and you just need one more of that item, and that town will have it. It's also a good place to buy arrows. Sometimes they'll sell special arrows like bomb arrows and electricity arrows, and that's really good. And it's just kind of a nice place to have anyway. There's inns here. I mean, it's it's good just to come and hang around a town and just see what's there. So the shrine is going to be up here, and I've been on my horse pretty extensively for these last few videos, but truthfully, I'm not going to be spending a whole lot of time on my horse because it's just kind of a pain to have to get off him every time you want to pick up something, and it does save a lot of time getting to where you're going, but with the power of editing, it's not really going to make too much of a difference on the video. Also, see that pathway to the right? That is where the fairy fountain is, which I will be showing off in the next video, but because I don't have enough rupees, I'm not actually going to be enabling the fairy fountain yet, so I may be saving that for a different time. You need a hundred rupees to be able to activate the first fairy fountain. So anyway, when you're ready, just uh, fly on down here or walk over here, and this is where Impa's hut is. So once you go up here, there will be a whole lot of talking and cutscene, and that's pretty much going to be it for this video. It has been quite a long time, Link. I am much older now, but you remember me, don't you? Thank you. 
The history of the royal family of Hyrule is also the history of Calamity Ganon, a primal evil that has endured over the ages. This evil has been turned back time and time again by a warrior wielding the soul of a hero and a princess who carries the blood of the goddess. With the passage of time, each conflict with Ganon faded into legend. So listen closely as I tell you of this legend that occurred 10,000 years ago. Hyrule was then blossoming as a highly advanced civilization. Even the most powerful monsters posed little threat to the denizens of the realm. The people thought it wise to utilize their technological prowess to ensure the safety of the land, should Calamity Ganon ever return. They constructed four mechanical wonders that came to be known as the Divine Beasts. They also built a legion of autonomous weapons called Guardians. The Divine Beasts were piloted by four individuals of exceptional skill from across the land. And thus, the plan to neutralize Ganon was forged. Upon Ganon's inevitable return to Hyrule, the princess and the hero fought alongside these four champions against this ancient evil. The Guardians were tasked with protecting the hero as the Divine Beasts unleashed a furious attack upon their terrible foe. And when the hero wielding the sword that seals the darkness delivered his final blow, the princess used her sacred power to seal away Calamity Ganon. 